now it's my honor to introduce U.S. Representative Ann Wagner of the 2nd District of Missouri, who will be sharing with us her insights into the grave issue of online sex trafficking and the problems posed by Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. Uh, Representative Wagner was elected to Congress in 2012, and since arriving in D.C., she has distinguished herself as one of its foremost anti-trafficking leaders by sponsoring important legislation aimed at reducing trafficking in persons and aiding its victims. She sponsored and passed the SAVE Act to allow federal prosecution of online advertisers of sex trafficking, and her Put, her put Trafficking Victims First Act passed the House in May uh, of this year, and if it becomes law, this legislation will ensure that governmental and law enforcement mechanisms continue to make strides in improving victim identification, recovery, and restoration. And la the reason that we're all here today is she's the sponsor of H.R. 1865, the Allow States and Victims to Fight Online Sex Trafficking Act of 2017, FOSTA, a bill aimed at driving a stake in the heart of the monstrous phenomenon of online sex trafficking, the topic we're here to discuss. Representative Wagner, thank you and welcome. Thank you. I'll tell you, if we get this done, FOSTA, this piece of legislation, will be the most important piece of legislation that we will have passed out of the United States House of Representatives. Dealing, I don't care whether we're dealing with, with, with sex trafficking or anything else. This, this legislation and your work will save lives. Save lives. I think that's how we got it. Thanks to Lisa. Thank you for organizing uh, and, and all of you for being here today. We've got groups here that, that are involved in the grassroots organizations. As I said to some of you that I saw earlier today, I, I stand on your shoulders. We've got uh, a lot of congressional staffers that are here, and I want to make sure that you guys are taking notes uh, and taking names because we want to make sure that, uh, that we get uh, all your bosses on the, the legislation here going forward. Um, for all of you who have been following um, the national conversation, we know that sex trafficking has, has moved from the streets to the internet. Uh, some sad statistics here, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children has witnessed an 846% increase in suspected child sex trafficking reports. Eight hundred and forty six percent increase in um, in recent years and eighty one percent of these reports concern online trafficking facilitated by websites um, that help traffickers post these advertisements backpage.com is the largest of these websites but it is just a part and I want to underscore that just a part of the diverse and growing um, I'll call ecosystem uh, since Backpage became, began successfully claiming Section 230 immunity, uh, starting in about just 2010, uh, in courts all across the country, hundreds and hundreds of advertising sites have jumped into the market, many of which are, frankly, uh, far more explicit even than Backpage.com. Eros, E-R-O-S, serves the high-end market. Escorts in college advertises women close to and under the age of consent. And Massage Troll is popular, sadly, in my own district uh, in the arena of St. Louis, uh, Missouri. And I could go on and on and on. Beyond these advertising hubs, there are also hobby boards. I just want you to understand how hideous this is. Hobby boards, websites where Johns post reviews of their sexual encounters. The erotic review, which is one of them, is called, serves as what I, as the Yelp um, of the sex market, allowing users to rate victims on extremely explicit details with shockingly graphic descriptions that um, I frankly will not repeat here. Um, I've spoken and spent a lot of time with, and so has my team, with state and local prosecutors across America, 
where the majority of these cases are investigated, charged, and prosecuted at the state and local level. They want to, to hold online advertisers accountable, but they cannot. Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act has been interpreted so broadly that uh, criminal and civil cases against Backpage have been thrown out time and time again. <coughs> when Congress passed Section 230 more than 20 years ago, I remind you, this was in 1996, to think about how the internet and, and, and technology has evolved. So over 20 years ago, they passed Section 230. Congress clearly never intended for uh, the internet to become a red light district, but sadly it has. Congress says it prioritizes the fight against sex trafficking, but allowing courts to block the enforcement of sex trafficking laws against online distribution services, especially at the state and local level, has intensified trafficking in America. Last year, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the First Circuit ruled that there is a fundamental tension between Section 230 and our nation's sex trafficking laws, and that the remedy, and this is verbatim from the court's opinion, the remedy is legislation, not litigation. Last month, a California judge ruled that, and I quote, if and until Congress sees fit to amend the immunity law, the broad reach of the CDA even applies to those alleged to support the exploitation of others by human trafficking. So, it's real simple. Congress must legislate, plain and simple. In April, we introduced H.R. 1865. We allow states and victims to, and the important part here is fight online state, uh, or pardon me, online sex trafficking act, FOSTA, FOSTA. Gotta come up with something catchy, so. Fight online state, uh, pardon me, sex, online sex trafficking act. The bill very narrowly clarifies that the CDA does not protect websites that facilitate sex trafficking. Uh, many of you know that sex trafficking is a form of slavery far older than our nation, frankly, but it has uh, not always been a crime. Again, I want you to understand how important education and awareness is and how long it's taken us. So this has been around since before, uh, before our nation was even created. It wasn't until the year 2000 that Congress finally passed legislation to explicitly define and criminalize sex trafficking. Then it took until 2015, Congress then finally passed legislation to explicitly allow prosecutors to charge buyers of sex trafficking victims. And now, with the support of survivors, many of whom are, are in the audience here uh, today, 50 <laughs> attorneys general, state and local prosecutors, law enforcement, and organizations that are as diverse as Oracle, um, the Family Research Council, to the National Organization Against Women. Never did I ever think it would be a Family Research Council, and now to be joined hand in hand. But that's how bipartisan this is. That's um, that's how much you know that this is a struggle against good and evil. Um, now, I believe from, from, from 2000 to 2015, we are gonna make 2017 the year that Congress finally passes legislation to explicitly allow victims and states to hold online marketplaces accountable for, property, for profiting for the exploitation of the most vulnerable. We have the momentum, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we've got over 150 co-sponsors on, um, on FOSTA. Um, we want to make sure that that number grows. We've got to get well above the 200 um, mark in order for that uh, uh, to happen. And as I said, this is a struggle against good and evil, plain and simple. So I look forward to the panel of speakers and um, and will deconstruct the resistance of the tech industry, 
who's, who is frankly, uh, if, at the end of the day, this is business, and it's all about money to them. It's about money, or it's about our, our sisters, and our daughters, and our grandchildren, and our grandsons. That's what this is about. So I, I live for the day that we uh, can defend the basic rights of all those who've been enslaved, regardless of whether they're sold online or offline. So I thank you. I thank you for your fight. All of you are heroes to me. Thank you for your courage. Uh, you make sure that you staffers, you get your bosses on board or you'll be hearing from me or you'll be hearing from all of them in this room too. So, uh, so I thank you and I'll turn it back over. Lisa, thank you.